Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. Good evening, guys. How are you today? Is Anything. it raining? Is it raining at your home? Here is it. It's raining. Here is raining a little bit. It's uh, very softly. Listen fine. It's fine, the weather. How is the weather like at your home today, this night? Is it hot? Is it cool? Or is it normal? How is the weather like at your home, uh, Brenda? Hello, Brenda, are you there? Hello. How is the weather like today, tonight? Is it hot or is it cool? I don't know. I don't understand. Uh, ¿Cómo está el clima ahora? Uh, oh, well. <laughs> um, cold. Cool or hot? Or yes. is warm? Cool. cool. Mm. Okay, here it's raining. So um, it's a, maybe a good weather for me, but when it's rain harder I, I don't like that because uh, we have problems with the internet but right now it's okay okay good evening guys uh i hope you are okay i hope you had a good a good day today and we are going to start with the class today is tuesday uh 27th and we're going to continue uh, this time with uh, our recalling previous knowledge about yesterday class. Today we have a new topic, which is scamming, scanning. I mean, so we are going to study what uh, scanning means, and we are going to develop some examples. Uh, well. Let me continue. Yesterday we were studying um, the use of wool and can. Tonight we are going to review about the use of wool and I'm going to introduce another, another auxiliary, which is cool. Cool means uh, almost the same that wool. Both can be used uh, to make requests or to make offers. So we are going to introduce cool tonight and we are going to uh, to Hello. review some, some examples. Okay, uh, please do me a favor if you are if you have your mics on. Um, please turn them off if you are not speaking so the rest of the class can speak well please okay um i need a volunteer uh do you remember about yesterday topic the use of cool let me see somebody uh, is there Sochil? Sochil Alexandra. Hi. 
So you dije, hey, are you uh, a participant or are you an uh, English corporative staff? Because this is the first time uh, that I see you. Participant. Okay, are you, you are a participant. Okay. Um, can you read uh, this information about the use of wool and cool? This is an example. Could you help me for a minute, please? And what does school show in this sentence, in this question? Uh, continue reading this part. This shows that the speaker is. Hello, Sochi. Hello. Okay, help me read in this part, please. This one. This part. This shows. This shows that the speaker is asking for help. Politely. 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 Okay, cool uh, means um, something polite when you are for a request. Uh, politely means uh, the same that wool. Let's see another another use. Uh, we use cool to ask questions in a very polite way. Uh, we use wool you and cool you. Then we can add the word please plus the may verb in simple present verb and the complement plus the question mark. For instance, would you please email that document uh, to me or for me? Because I need that as soon as possible. I need that as, up, as soon as possible. And then we have another example. Could you explain that again, please? I didn't understand. We use school and wool for uh, to make requests, to ask for help. And what will be the possible answer for these questions? Do you have any idea? Those can be negative or positive answers. What will be the possible answer, uh, Alejandra Elizabeth? Mm, for the first one, yes, I will. A yes, short I, answer. <laughs> yeah, a short answer. Yes, I will. And for the second one, let me see, Claudia, Rebecca. What will be your answer for this question? Will you explain that for me? Can you explain that again, please? Uh, hello, Rebecca. Okay, somebody else. Somebody else. Uh, are you there? Uh, here, some I don't know, teacher. Yes, I could. Yes, uh, that that is a possible answer. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, then I'm going to show you some uh, some more options so you can answer in a positive way. So yes, I can. Yes, that is that is a possible answer. Yes, sure. That's okay. But now I'm going to show you how uh, you can answer as well for positive answers. As you can see, there are more possible uh, answer, more possibilities to answer those kind of questions. You can answer with a simple yes. Yes, 
certainly. You can say also certainly. Yes, of course. Of course. You can also say I'll be happy to. I'll be glad to. And you can also say my pleasure for positive answers. For this kind of answer uh, question, I mean, would you please email that document to me? You can say, yes, of course, I can. Or you can say, uh, I will be happy to. So you can use uh, any of these options to answer. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions so far with this? Okay, remember that we use cool to ask uh, for something in a polite way. Do you know what is polite? No. Yes. Uh, in a polite way, to, in in, uh, in Spanish, in a uh, in a forma educada, polite way, amable. So we use cool. We don't say um, help me for a minute because that sounds very strong. That sounds very uh, informal. If you say, "Hey, you help me." and you don't even say please, you may receive a negative question, a ne negative answer. They will say, uh, sorry, I don't have time, I'm busy, because you are not polite. Uh, so if you want to receive a positive answer, you, you may use school and the word please. Would you help me for a minute, please? And that sounds more polite. Also, we can answer with a negative form. The answer can be negative. Also in a, in a polite way. And to answer negatively, we can say no or sorry. No, I'm sorry, I can't. Very polite. And also you can say, sorry, I can't, I'm busy right now. And I would like to, but I can't. I would love to, but I'm busy right now. The, that is a very polite way to say no, to refuse uh, a request. Uh, is, it, is that clear, guys? The use of uh, the some possible ways to answer those kind of kind of questions positive or negative yes okay um let's see i have some questions in here i will ask you and then you will answer to me it can be negative or positive uh the answer so I will ask to, to Luis Pleites. Are you there, Luis? Are you there, Luis? Okay, another participant. Maria Lorena, are you there, Maria? Okay, a volunteer, any volunteer to answer the first question. Mm. Yes, of course. I will love, but, but I'm busy right now. Okay, uh, first I'm going to ask you and then you, you answer to me. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, listen. Would you open the door, please? 
I will know, but I'm busy right now. Okay, you are busy. That's okay. You can't right now. You can't help me. So I will ask to Alejandra Elizabeth. Would you open the door, please? Um, yes, I. <laughs> yes, I love it. No. I would. Yes. Or you can say, my pleasure. Uh, of course. Sure. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Uh, another question uh, for any volunteer. Will you go with me? Will you go with me? Yes, I like to go with you. Yes, I like to go with you. Okay, thank you. As you can see, uh, that song more polite than for the first one. It sounds different differently. Then you say, open the door, please. That sounds very strong. You need the word, wool, the auxiliary. Would you open the door, please? And in here, it sounds more polite that, than, will you go with me? That sounds very um, not polite. We need wool to, uh, uh, to ask for requests politely. And the last one, would you do the, the housework for me, please? I, I'd love to, but I can't right now. I'd love to, but I can't right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a good answer. If you don't want to do the housework, you can say uh, in a polite way, no. No, with a strong way, direct, di directly. Only saying no. Would you do the house the housework for me? No, <laughs> that sounds uh, it's not polite. So if you if you ask in a polite way, you have to the other ha have to answer as well in a polite sí, way. Estaba en otra en otra área. Creo que algunos estamos en otra área, pero. Um, in another meeting. Sí. Están en otra reunión o cómo? No, no. Lo que pasa es que nos habían mandado el link de Zoom y nos habíamos metido eh, eh, en esa aplicación que nos habían mandado. Estábamos ahí como tres compañeros. Pero oh. ya. Ahora sí ya no, están. Estamos bien. Ya solventaron. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay, for you that just arrived, do you have any questions? Para los que acaban de llegar, ¿tienen alguna pregunta? Estamos viendo the use of wool and cool. Yesterday it was can, but today I'm introducing cool. That is another way to ask for requests. So we were um, practicing some questions and those are some uh, possible ways to answer. The answer can be directly yes, yes, certainly. It can be certainly, yes, of course. Of course, I will be happy to, I'll be glad to and my pleasure to positive answer. And for negative, you can say no, or you can say sorry. You can say as well, no, I'm sorry, I can't. Sorry, I can't, I'm busy right now. I would like to, but I can't. I love to, but I'm busy right now. Uh, those are very polite ways to say no. When somebody asks you for help, If you don't have any questions, we we're going to the next slide. Then we were practicing some questions and you answered to me. Uh, 
Right now I have some questions with who. I need two volunteers, one for asking and the other one for answering. Uh, okay, Oscar Ortega, can you ask this question for somebody? The first one. Could you lend me five dollars? Oh, oh, pardon. Yes, could you lend me five dollars? Could you lend, lend me five dollars? No, no, I, I am sorry, I can. I can't right now. I would like to, but I don't have money. <laughs> yes. Another possibility. I would like to help you, but right now I don't have enough money. That is a possibility to to say not politely in a very polite way. Okay, next question. Could you tell me when the meeting begins? Or could you tell me when the meeting starts? Another volunteer. Excuse me, I don't know too. Excuse me. Um, the answer can be. Yes, I can or sure for positive or for negative uh, i would like to but i can but i'm not able to to tell the other one when the meeting starts okay another yes of question. course yes of course yes of course i can tell i can tell you then we have the, the last one. Could you please pass me the salt? Could you please pass me the salt? Yes, it's a pleasure for me. Yes, uh, my pleasure. It will be a pleasure to me. Okay, thank you. As you can see, you can no, answer. Yes, I can. Yes, I can as well. As, yes, I can. as you can see, there are no many. Okay. What is your question? It doesn't matter if don't if it isn't the please the the word please. If you don't use the word please, correct? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, as oh, as okay. long as you use the model or the auxiliary could and would, and that shows that is a polite way okay. to make the, the question. Thank this you. shows politely. Uh -huh. You can say, could you pass me the salt? And you can omit, please, and there's no problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, nice. Let's see. Uh, there is an exercise in, on the platform that we are going to develop tonight. And that is related with the topic, the use of wool. I know that um, uh, most of you have already done, but we are going to complete that just to practice. Okay, what uh, we are going to do is to read the following invitations and select the best response, the best answer. I need volunteers to read the questions and we are going to answer together. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. All the instructions or the questions? Uh, this time the questions. The, okay. the question. Okay, uh, I have tickets to the baseball game on Saturday. Would you like to go? Would you like to go? And what is the possible answer? Yes, 
I love to. I love to. Yes, I love to. We can say yes, I am because it's not a, it's not a yes no question. It's a invitation for the for the baseball game. Yes, I would love to. Okay, thank you. Next one. Number two. Would you like to fall over for dinner tomorrow night? Would you like to come over for dinner tomorrow night? And what will be the the best answer? I lied, but I have to I like work late. I have to work late. I like to, but I have to work late. Yes. And this one is I like to, but I have meeting. Uh, the the instruction in here is is wrong, but I have meeting. Is not complete. It may be. But I have a meeting. So the correct answer is the first one. I lied, but I have to work late. Okay, thank you. The meeting can be in the morning by that, maybe. Yeah, but I have a meeting in the morning or in the afternoon. Thank you. No, I'll look at the question. Tomorrow night. So that means that, that the meeting is at night. But it, the answer is wrong in this case. So the best answer is the first one. Okay, number yeah. three. Or do you have a question? Would you like to go to a concert with me this weekend? And the answer, which one is the best? Yes, I, I will really like to go. I like to go. I'll. Yes, I really like to go. I will really like to go. I will like to go. We use will for the answer as well. And number four. Would you like to go a soccer match next Sunday? Would you like to go to a soccer match next Sunday? What is missing here in this in, in the number the number four? What is missing? ¿Qué le falta a esta pregunta? And the question mark. The question mark, right? Because it's a question, we need a, a question mark. Otherwise, it's a simple sentence that uh, hasn't have a meaning because the question mark is missing. So we add the question mark and we turn that into a question. Would you like to go to a soccer match next Sunday? Yes, I love to, thank you. Yes, I wouldn't love to, thank you. Which one is the, the best? The first. the first one. The first one. The first one, because in the second one is a negative answer. It's a kind of mix. First you are you are saying yes, then you say I wouldn't. Yes, I wouldn't love to. It doesn't make sense. So the first one is the right. And for the last one, the number five. You like to watch a movie on Friday night. Would you like to watch a movie on Friday night? And the answer. Yes, I like to, but I have to work. Yes, I like to, but I have to work. The second one? The second one. Because we don't say has, we say I have, I have to work. Has is for the third person, she or he. She has to work, he has to work. 
when we are talking about ourselves, we say have. I have to work. Or they have to work if we are talking about uh, about them. Teacher, la, 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 segunda la segunda pregunta, supuestamente la respuesta es la, la, la tercera. The second one. Sí, se, según la es... plataforma es la... Uh, This one. I tried no. with the first one yeah. and it was wrong. Uh, let me check. Do you mean this okay. one? The number yeah. two. Según la, según la plataforma es la número tres, la respuesta. That one. I like yeah. to, but I have meeting. Yeah. Oh, yes, because it doesn't in have the two. first options, we don't have uh, two. the two. I like we need to say i like to i would like to i like to but i have meeting okay let's uh, change that mm. and let's submit but i have a meeting or i have a meeting at night let's check okay thank you for the correction as you can see, it's very easy to use uh, the auxiliary uh, would and could to make requests and to ask for questions and help. If you don't have any questions, we are going to uh, to end here this topic and we are going to continue with, with another one. If you want to clarify something, you can ask me right now. Okay, no question? No question. No. Okay, no question. Let's go to the other topic. And that is skimming, scanning. I mean, there are some strategies for reading when you are reading and scanning this one is one of them do you know what is a scanning no yes and no okay let me explain you a scanning is when you are reading and you look for an specific information for example uh, you don't have to read the complete paragraph if you are looking only, only for a name or for a number, you uh, read faster looking for the specific word. For example, uh, if you are looking for a phone number, you don't stop reading uh, the whole paragraph. You go straight to look for the phone number and you identify that in the paragraph. That is a scanning. Let me show you uh, with the theory here. Let me show you. Okay, scanning. You can use the scanning technique to look for a phone number or read through the small ads in a newspaper or for browsing television schedules, timetables, lists, catalogs, or web page for information. For this task, you, can, you don't need to read or understand every word. You go direct to the information that you want to find either in a newspaper, in a magazine, in an article, or in a book, you go direct to the world or the information that you want to, to find. As well, scanning is also useful when you don't have time to read every word. This could be when you are studying 
or looking for a specific information from a book or article, you need to find to find it quickly. Cuando queremos ir directamente al, al, a la respuesta o algún dato en específico, no vamos leyendo palabra por palabra, sino que nos saltamos las palabras que no nos sirven. Si andamos buscando una dirección, por ejemplo, vamos a buscar donde diga el, el nombre del departamento, ya sea aquí, o algún número de casa o pasaje. We don't stop reading every word in the text. We go direct to the information. Uh, do you get the point? Do you get the concept? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. There are some tips uh, for better scanning. These ones are some of them. Can somebody please help me reading the tips? Can I do it? This tip. Don't okay. try to read every word. Okay. Instead, okay. let your eyes move quickly across the page until you find what you are looking for. Okay, uh, let me let me explain this part. Don't try to read every word. Instead, and what they so let your eyes move quickly across the page until you find what you are looking for. If you have if you have a complete document, don't waste your time reading the whole document if you are looking only for a date. For example, if you are looking for a, a birthday, uh, just go direct for the date and stop reading there when you find that. Okay, thank you, Silvia. Next one, somebody else or Silvia, you can continue. Use clues on the page such as hearings and titles uh, to help you. To help you. You can use clues. Clues or pistas in clues Spanish. On the page. You can use clues on the page, such as hearings and titles. Yes. For example, yes. this one is a hearing. This, that is, this phrase that is bigger than the other ones. This is a, a title or a hidden, un encabezado o un título. You can read first one, the hidden, and you can decide if you are reading the correct information. For example, if the read, if the hidden says, uh, it talk about, let's say, tigers, but you are looking for uh, you are looking for uh, lions. You are looking information for lions. If you read here that the article talk about uh, tigers, stop reading because it's not there the information. You must move to the next uh, paragraph. Do you understand? Do you get the idea? Yes. Si ven, ok, si ven que en el encabezado habla de tigres y ustedes andan buscando acerca de leones, obviously there is not there the information. No va a estar ahí la información que ustedes quieren. So, continue reading the next paragraph. Ok, next one. Somebody? Somebody else, please, with the next. As soon tip. as your eyes catch an important word, stop reading. Or phrase, stop reading. As soon as your eyes catches an important word or phrase, stop reading. 
as I told you before, uh, if you are looking for a phone number, when you find the, the number, stop reading and then copy the information or, or use the information that you are looking for. Okay, thank you. And the last one, the last tip. There are more, but, but these are the most important. Thank you, Lopez. When you locate information requiring attention, you then slow down to read the relevant section more carefully. Yes, thank you. As I told you, when you locate the information requiring attention, the information that you are looking for, you can uh, slow down. You can read slowly so you can analyze the information. If you are looking for an address and then you, you find uh, one address, you slow down and analyze if that is the address that you are looking for or can be any data, can be a name, a year, a date, or a place, anything. So the most important in here in the scanning technique is that you don't read everything. You don't read the whole paragraph. You just look for the specific information. Okay, do you have any questions for the scanning technique? No. 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 Okay, let's see. Okay, thank you for coming. See you tomorrow and have a good night. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I have a, an exercise about scanning so we are going to put it uh, that information in practice we are going to solve some uh, one exercise and here it is can you see that recipe can you see the recipe yes. okay look uh, what I need you to do is uh, answer this these questions these questions, five questions. You have to scan through the recipe to find the answer to these questions, five questions. So the first one, uh, well, we are going to analyze that. Whose recipe is this? Whose recipe is this? Whose recipe? What, what do we want to know? with this question what do we need to find who made the recipe who made the recipe or the chef the name we are looking for an, a specific name whose recipe is this the quien es esta receta so what do we want to find the name of the chef. We want to find the name of, of the chef that made the recipe. So go up and this look recipe. for the recipe. Mm -hmm. Look for the information and scan es for the answer. Teacher, scanning, it's Matthew scanning. Martin. Matthew, Matthew Martin. Matthew Martin, okay, this is the answer. But the answer for your question, what is a scanning? Yes. A scanning is, okay, lose, look this, this picture. Let me show you. Can you see this? I don't know what is the name of it in, in English, but in Spanish, is a lupa scan when you look for a specific information. So, scanear. 
We scan the information. Okay, let's continue. The first uh, question was, whose recipe is this? Or who made the recipe? And you scan it and you find the answer in here by Matthew Martin. That is the, the answer. You don't need to read everything because in here you have the ingredients, you have the method or the procedure. You just need the name of the chef who made the, uh, the recipe. So you did a good, a good job. And then we are going to answer the second one. How many cloves of garlic, garlic are used? Two. Garlics. How many cloves of garlic are used? Oops. Look for the information and find that. How many cloves do we Two need? Cloves. Two cloves. Two we garlic. find that in the ingredients. Two cloves. Uh, number three. What comes in a jar? What comes in a jar? Look for the information. What comes in a jar? Look at the keyword jar. One large jar, tikka masala sauce. Tikka masala sauce. Tikka masala sauce comes in a jar. Un jarrón de tikka masala sauce. So you find that as well in the ingredients. Next question. How long should you uh, simmer the sauce? How long should you simmer the sauce? Where will you find that the answer? In the ingredients, in the procedures? In the procedure. In the procedure, right. How long the do you simmer the sauce? Five minutes. For five minutes. Five minutes. And what is simmer? Simmer. Do you know the meaning of that? No, no I don't. No. Simmer is, is, is an action. It's like boil. boil. When you boil uh, water, you can you can cook eggs. Yeah. You boil the water. Uh, is similar is is similar to simmer. Herbir. Or. Dejar herbir. So you simmer the sauce for five minutes. And the last one. What will you serve the chicken with? With rice. What should you serve the chicken with? And you find that at the end. With rice. With rice. With rice. You serve the chicken with rice. So as you can see, it's very easy. An important tip is that first you have to know what, what do you want to find. You have to know uh, the information that you want to know. The, the question, you need a question. So you can scan direct, directly the, the information. Then you have to look for keywords. For keywords, for example, how many cloves of garlic then in the paragraph you look for these words cloves of garlic oh. then you will find the answer when you find these words you will find the answer as well this is the keyword for this question the jar what comes in a jar in a jar eh, que encontramos en una jarra a large jar uh, Tikka masala sauce. 
the camasala soap comes in a jar. Then how long uh, should you simmer this out? Look at the word simmer. That is our keyword. Nuestra palabra clave. Simmer is the keyword to find that answer. And, uh, and the last one, what should you serve the chicken with? We have served the chicken. Those are our keywords. Esas son nuestras uh, palabras clave. To find that, the answer. As you can see, it's very easy and you can put this in, in practice when you are reading and to answer a, an exam, an evaluation, you don't have to read everything. You, you just look for your question, your answer, I mean. First read the question and then look for the answer quickly without uh, stopping reading everything. Do you have any question about the topic, about the vocabulary or the meaning of the words? Uh, maybe pronunciation? No question? What is Charlotte? This one? Yes. Is um a synonym of onion do you know red onions yes so those are shallots okay. a half half an onion as you can see you can use half an onion la mitad de una cebolla or two shallots okay. like two red onions Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Any other question? Tika, teacher, what is this? Which one? What's the meaning of the Tika? Tika? Tika. I don't know. Yes. Uh, that is the proper, proper name of the sauce. Es el nombre propio de la salsa. Tika masala. It doesn't have a translation. Both meanings uh, can be used in English or in Spanish. We don't need a translation for that word. Because it's the proper name of the recipe. Parsley. Who say parsley? The parsley are this leaf. It's like uh, perejil or oregano, I don't know. Perejil. Perejil, okay. And what is garnish? To garnish. What is the meaning of garnish? Garnition. No, look at uh, at this. To garnish, we need flat leaf parsley, this one, and a lemon cut into wedges or cut into pieces. So garnish is like decorate. Adornar this. Yes, mm -hmm. to decorate the dish. Para adornar. Uh, let's see. Yes, decorar. If you don't have any question about the topic scanning, um, let me see what time it is. We can do the exercise that is on the platform. Teacher, what is boneless? Boneless. Boneless yes. chicken. A bone yes. means in Spanish, uh, 
or huesos, no, uh, hueso. And less, uh. less is that it doesn't have. So it it's mean deshuesado uh, in Spanish, okay. boneless, without bones. Like in the buffalo wing, we find the, the wings and the boneless. Which one do you prefer, boneless or wings? Oh, wings. 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 With bones. I prefer boneless because it's easier to eat. It's easier to eat. So do you have it? Any questions so far? Do you have any questions so far? No questions. Okay, no questions. Um, how are you going with the platform? I finished. You finish? Uh, I start the five. Uh, Lesson. The five section. Section, yeah. Okay, that's nine. Um, can no actual mister? Todos lo hicieron. Okay, nice. Ah, uh, nada más recordarles que esta semana llegamos hasta el jueves. Then we have vacations. August vacation, one week, one week. So if you have an advance on the platform, you can take uh, that time to study, to practice, or to complete the exercise, uh, to complete section four and five. If you have vacation, you can uh, take advantage of that time. Si tienen vacaciones pueden aprovechar ese tiempo. Because then uh, we have only six classes. One week and then two more days from the other week. So pueden aprovechar el tiempo en vacación. Si no tienen algo que hacer importante, pueden dedicar una hora, media hora, lo que sea. Eso les va a ayudar a ustedes a practicar. Igual podemos uh, discutir algo que no sepan en el chat. Si a veces no le contesto es porque, uh, porque trabajo durante el día, pero están sus compañeros que los pueden ayudar. Para los que tienen un poquito de dificultades con el contenido. So remember that we are here to help you practicing your English, then you are going to um, move to another course. This is pre-beginner one. Then you are going to, to go to the pre-beginning two or, or three, I don't know, depends on, on your skills, depends on your abilities and how much you have advanced in this course and how much uh, do you get in the score? That is very important that you have to get a minimum score of uh, 80%. Un mínimo de 80%. Uh, most of you have uh, the 100%. Ya toparon el curso. Uh, y eso es bueno porque en el otro curso les va a ayudar bastante. So you don't go from zero. You start with previous knowledge. Ya van a tener conocimientos acerca de los temas que, que ya tenemos. In the other courses, uh, some of them are reviews, the first topics. Pero no está nada mal estudiarlo de nuevo porque English is about practice. So if you don't practice, you will forget the information and then you lose ability you lose your abilities 
So that's why it's important to practice and read uh, when you have time. When you are reading, you gain information, you get new words, new knowledge and new vocabulary. Y también al, al leer los obliga a ustedes cuando no saben una palabra a buscar el significado. Y eso es importante cuando están aprendiendo inglés porque uh, como la mayoría de nosotros trabajamos, a muchos no nos queda tiempo de leer o practicar con alguien. So when you have time, you can read. You can read an article uh, or a book. You can read anything as long as you read. Uh, if you read 10 minutes a day, it will be enough. That will be great, great for you. So if you have the chance to read, uh, please do that because that is going to help you. Le va a ayudar bastante la lectura. So if you don't have any questions, we are going to stop here. Y para los que tenían dudas, uh, perdón, dudas con el certificado, me informaron de que es un error del proveedor, pero que se va a estar solventando at the end of the course, al final del curso. Así que no se preocupen, siempre van a tener a uh, su certificado, siempre y cuando lleguen al, al score y comple completen la, la, plata, la plataforma. So thank you for coming, guys. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Remember to practice. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, everybody. See you. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night.